Well, raging wildfires and historically extreme heat engulfing Western Europe right now. The United Kingdom already smashing its all-time heat record today. 39.1 uh, degrees Celsius was the record, uh, passing 40 degrees Celsius today. And not just one location, many locations. The blistering heat wave not over just yet. Portions of Europe will still remain extremely high. And that's obviously contributed to some serious fires in the country as well. For more on the factors that are fueling this extreme event, let's bring in Michael Mann, Director of Earth System Science Center at Penn State University. Uh, thanks so much for being with us. This is rare, rarefied air, no question, right? When you look at the factors contributing to the, the epic heat wave in Europe, what are you looking at? What's contributing to this? Yeah, well, obviously, we've made the planet warmer. So at a very basic level, we expect uh, more frequent and intense heat waves. And of course, we're seeing that summer after summer. But with this event and with the number of events that we've seen in recent summers, there's something else that's going on. It's got a fancy name. It's called uh, planetary wave resonance or quasi-resonant amplification. Um, it's the same phenomenon when you sing in the shower, your voice sounds better because the sound waves happen to resonate with the dimensions of that shower. Um, and so those sound waves uh, amplify. The same thing can happen to the wiggles in the jet stream. Uh, they can amplify, and when they get larger, when those wiggles get larger, we've got deeper ridges and deeper troughs, bigger high pressure and low pressure systems that gives us more extreme weather. And in recent years, uh, we and other scientists have found that the warming of the planet, and in particular, the enhanced warming of the Arctic, is changing the temperature differences from the equator to the pole in a way that slows down the jet stream and makes it more likely that you get those resonant events. And that's what's happening right now. We've got this big resonance event, this big high pressure ridge over England, giving them the sorts of temperatures and, and pressures that you normally expect in the deep subtropics down in Morocco, for example. Climate experts like yourself obviously study this, have an explanation, expect this. Yet to many, this 40 degrees Celsius was still a surprise. How, how shocking was it to you to see some of the numbers that have come in today? Yeah, I mean, it was shocking to me, to be perfectly honest. Um, you know, uh, we scientists often talk in, in Celsius or centigrade temperatures. So 40 C is one of those thresholds that we just don't expect to see uh, broken in uh, the northern parts of Europe. 40.4 um, C, uh, 104 degrees Fahrenheit. In Paris, it was 106 degrees Fahrenheit. Three years ago, that would have been an all-time high. But now it isn't because we're setting records year after year. And so we are living, you know, in the very best scenario, a new normal uh, where we have to deal with these sorts of extremes. The bad news is that it's worse than that. Uh, it's worse than a new normal. It continues to get warmer. We continue to get more of these very extreme and damaging events if we continue to warm up the planet through fossil fuel burning and carbon pollution. Do events like this, do you believe, have to be a wake-up call for Europe? We have so few homes here that have air conditioning. You know, if we don't find a way to uh, make it safer for humans, well, I mean, we're going to see large losses of life in future heat waves. That, that's exactly right. You know, in general, Europeans aren't prepared for this sorts of these sorts of extremes in heat. And you know, in the European heat wave of 2003, there were more than 30,000 uh, deaths because of that extreme heat. Extreme heat is one of the biggest killers when it comes to uh, weather events and and climate. And what we see in the projections, um, if you project forward, if we continue to warm up the planet, uh, then climate change will take a far greater toll on human life than COVID-19. We, we look at COVID-19 as a tragic you know, crisis um, that has led to uh, you know, widespread loss of life, but we will lose far more lives due to the impacts of climate change if we don't do something about this problem. And the heat also leading to wildfires, some of the largest uh, on record for some of these countries all across the continent, Dr. Mann. Yeah. Uh, that's right. I mean, it's not rocket science, as I like to say. You, you take extreme heat, extreme drought, which is also favored by climate change. Uh, you expect the subtropics and mid-latitudes to be drier uh, in the summer. So you put together that heat and drought, and you've got the ingredients for these massive wildfires. Uh, like I saw down in Australia a couple of years ago when I was doing uh, a sabbatical there during what they now refer to as the Black Summer. Well, we're having uh, similar 
widespread wildfires here in the Northern Hemisphere this summer as a consequence of the heat and the drought. And we simply wouldn't be seeing this extreme heat, this combination of drought and heat, and these sorts of wildfires in the absence of human-caused planetary warming. <laughs>